first of all, I want to say that I am not a poultry researcher. <laughs> um, so uh, bear with me if there's some information about poultry that I'm not so familiar with. Here in Washington State, we spend a lot more time dealing with dairy manure than poultry. Um, the reason I'm doing this presentation is that AgStar, EPA AgStar, estimates 11,000 farms that could be potential sites for digesters across the U.S. And they come up with that 11,000 number by looking at swine farms and dairy farms. They're not really looking at the dry lot feedlots that uh, we just had this conversation, this wonderful presentation from, and they're not looking at poultry facilities. And so that's why I'm saying that we have an opportunity here that digesters could maybe be applied to poultry facilities and expand the amount of biogas opportunities. That is not to say that composting of poultry manure is not a viable, economic, wonderful method for the use of poultry manure or gasification. So I am not here to say that di anaerobic digestion is the preferred way over composting or gasification. It's just another uh, technology in the toolbox. Okay. Just wanted to start a little bit with uh, some statistics. There's 387 egg laying facilities that uh, have about 77% of the total market or 269 million birds. <coughs> so what I look at that is if you look at just the egg laying uh, part of the industry, you have a huge concentration into just 387 farms that would be perfect potential for anaerobic digestion, large-scale projects at, at those facilities. It gets a little bit bigger, more spread out with broilers. 33,000 farms uh, carry 67% of the market for 8.5 billion birds. Um, so a lot of my data and a lot of the focus that I've had uh, has been focused more on the egg laying as opposed to the broiler. The broiler is going to also be a drier material, has more litter in it. So it maybe it does lead itself to more of the gasification and uh, composting. Um, so a little, little bit of focus here, I think, is more on the laying <coughs> facility. Uh, 20 to 30 pounds of fresh manure per day per 100 layers. It's produced at about 75% moisture, but that can quickly change because as it's coming uh, out of the barns and going along the conveyors, that they, they're being dried and you can get to 20-60% dry solids pretty easily. And there's a high nutrient content uh, which has been why it's a valued compost product uh, especially for the organic industry. During the production in the barns and during the compost process if that's what you're doing you do have quite a bit of ammonia emissions. 16 to 21 grams of ammonia per hen per year uh, just from the barns and 160 grams of ammonia per year per hen from the compost operation. So we are just in the production of the eggs and making the compost releasing a lot of ammonia which we all know is going to start being regulated a little bit more tightly as time goes by. Concerns with doing uh, anaerobic digestion with poultry manure. Sing et al. in 2010 did a review of the literature out there for anaerobic digestion of poultry manure, and it's not much. There's not a whole lot of literature out there, and they summarize the reasons why. One is, and we've had this discussed before, is the poultry, more, poultry manure gets pretty dry pretty quickly. I mean, you're dealing with 40, 50 percent dry solids. And do you want to take that time and effort to uh, dilute it down and make it into a complete mixed stir reactor, get it 10% solids, and then produce wastewater, which typically, you know, our dairies are used to dealing with wastewater, but our poultry facilities or egg laying facilities, they don't have wastewater. They want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So um, you have this whole dilution problem. And second, you have an ammonia problem. The nitrogen content of poultry manure is considerably higher than dairy, higher than a swine. Um, and during the anaerobic digestion process, you're actually breaking down organic nitrogen to make even more ammonia. So as the process goes, the ammonia gets higher and higher, 
and you could have ammonia toxicity killing off the bacteria. So what Singh and I Singh and all summarized from their data is that you can get poultry digestion to work, but it really was only working if you were below 6% solids and actually most of the ones that were operating were quite a bit below 6% solids. So they were diluting a lot to try to bring those ammonia concentrations down. Um, or they were co-digesting. They weren't just a poultry uh, manure digester. They were bringing in other manures, food wastes, whatever, to, to try to uh, mediate that. Ward et al. did a nice review of uh, how to utilize poultry manure. Uh, and came up with the idea that really in 2003, and you know economics changed, but in 2003 the only really economically positive methods for treating the poultry manure was to pelletize or to compost. And pretty much just ruled out anaerobic digestion as a viable technology. Just said <coughs> it's not going to work because of the ammonia toxicity, the dilution concerns, and the fact that you're not really using, the, you're not solving nutrient problems for the barn or for the farm. Um, recent papers though have started to emphasize that if you could create an anaerobic digestion system where you kind of dealt with the ammonia somehow, some way, there are a variety of ways to try to deal with the ammonia, get rid of the ammonia, then you could digest. Maybe you can make this uh, whole system work. And I have a graph there with some unpublished data shows that you can make pretty good gas production if you digest uh, poultry manure at these low concentrations. But if you start um, trying to recycle, that means that after you digest, the liquid that you've produced, the effluent, if you return that liquid back to try to overcome this dilution concern, because you know if you, if you uh, dilute it to 6%, you're going to make a lot of effluent, a lot of wastewater. If you could try to keep recycling that back, you kind of avoid that wastewater problem, kind of fit it into the poultry farm preferred operation. But if you bring that effluent back, the uh, methane production starts to drop and drop and drop as you bring more and more back. And the reason it drops is because the ammonia concentration continues to climb and climb and climb. So how are we going to resolve this? You don't want to dilute too much because it doesn't fit to the farm infrastructure. One way to not dilute is to recycle the water, but if you recycle the ammonia gets worse. How can you solve that? Well, here's an example. The example I'm giving is at a farm in Ohio. It is by no means the only way to do it, and this farm has also been experiencing fits and turns because it's, they're just beginning to you know, learn how to do this process. There's been successes, been some failures. Um, but I just wanted to point out that really this is starting to coalesce into, into concepts, both in the literature and in the commercial scale. Basically what they do is they take these uh, 30, 40, 50 percent manure poultry solids plus the recycled effluent, and I'm going to talk about that in a bit, and they mix them together to get um, like an 8, 9, 10 percent total solids concentration that you could digest uh, in a variety of digester types, uh, complete mix or plug flow um, type of digester. Uh, the digester is going to make uh, biogas, which you can turn to electricity, um, or you could scrub it to make uh, renewable natural gas. The effluent coming off of the digester um, is going to have uh, the ammonia stripped out, and the ammonia that comes off is going to be contacted with acid to make ammonium sulfate fertilizer. The liquid that leaves here, that's now liquid with less ammonia, is going to have solids removed. And those solids contain a lot of the phosphorus. You could sell that as a fertilizer. And the remaining liquid after ammonia strip, after solids, actually is a little bit high in pH because you need um, 
uh, to raise the pH to strip out ammonia, and you can use that high pH to scrub the biogas. That was the concept at the farm. Here's the farm itself, uh, poultry barns. From the poultry barns, the manure is uh, stored in this shed. Um, the manure is then mixed with the liquid in a mixing tank here. That mixture is sent to a digester, goes through a 25-day digestion period. The gas is processed in an engine also in here. The effluent leaves the digester, is stripped out of its ammonia here, is reacted with acid to make ammonium sulfate here. The remaining liquid is put through a dissolved air flotation system to remove the solids and the liquid is sent back to recycle. Here's a picture of a front end loader taking those dried solids and dumping it into the mixing pit. In the process 30 to 50 percent solids are diluted to 9 percent solids roughly. Um, about 500 tons per day are treated uh, into the digester. The concentration of ammonia that goes into the digester is about 2,500 to 3,000 milligrams nitrogen per liter. You have literature that will say that at about 2,000 you can start seeing inhibition. But that's when you have bacteria that hasn't been acclimated. So this digester, as it's been running and running and it's gotten used to the higher ammonia concentrations, it's been able to handle the 2,500 to 3,000 level. A nearly closed loop is developed where 85% of the liquid being digested is sent back to this mixing pit. The reason why 85% is sent back is that 15% of the water is lost because of the solids that you're removing. And then you replace that 15% with egg wash water. So you are getting some fresh water to try to bring the salt concentrations back down to normal. After the mixing pit goes through this digester, uh, this one is a mixed plug flow. It could be complete mixed tank. 25-day uh, residence time. I think uh, the people who designed this would say they, in hindsight, would prefer to have a little bit more of a 30-day 30, 30 retention time with the poultry manure. It's at a mesophilic 100 degree Fahrenheit. Um, you could go thermophilic, but there's some you know, literature about at thermophilic you have maybe worse ammonia toxicity concerns. After digestion, they use engine waste heat to raise the temperature from 100 degrees to 120 degrees, strip out the ammonia. This used one particular method to strip out ammonia, air stripping. You could use a variety of different technologies to strip out the ammonia. Here the ammonia leaves, goes into a building that reacts with acid in a, in a packed bed tower. Uh, this is that building. Off to the side, this blue tower is where the acid is stored. This white tower is where the ammonium sulfate is produced and stored. And then it's piped to a, a loading station where trucks come and just pick up the ammonium sulfate solution and sell it to the local co-op. Um, this ammonium sulfate solution is 8% nitrogen, 9% uh, sulfur, uh, sold to the local corn growers. The liquid leaving that process goes through a dissolved air flotation method, produces a solid product. The liquid that leaves this after the solids are removed is 2.5% solids, and it's that 2.5% solids that is sent back as recycled water. Outputs from the system, 1.2 tons of ammonia is recovered per day. 1.2 tons that would normally have gone into the air. Producing roughly 15 tons of ammonium sulfate solution a day going off to the co-op or upon drying five to six tons of pure ammonium sulfate per day. The, the, the farm is now 
trying to get a higher price by drying the ammonium <coughs> sulfate as opposed to selling the, the liquid version. Uh, 23 tons of dry nutrient solids per day come off that DAF. Um, it's 20% carbon, 4% nitrogen, 6% phosphorus, 10% calcium, um, and sold as a little O organic fertilizer, not a big O because of the polymer usage. In conclusions, right now in the United States, we have seven on-farm poultry digesters. The majority of those poultry digesters are kind of doing the typical way of just dilute it uh, so you avoid the ammonia toxicity, but then you make a lot of wastewater. There um, are a lot of literature and examples like this where they're starting to do this different version of recycle using ammonia stripping. Um, I think there's still a lot of refinement that can be done in the system you know, to make the ammonia strippers better, to make the entire system integrate better, bring costs down, uh, have greater markets, uh, mature markets for the products. Um, you might be looking into CNG instead of the electricity, although the system wants to use a lot of heat, CNG is going to reduce the amount of available heat you have. And right now in the Chesapeake region, you have a couple of giant projects, Purdue being one of them, uh, that have been announced. Really giant projects uh, looking at poultry manure, poultry manure plus co-digestion, using this type of technology of recycling water and, and doing ammonia stripping. Uh, could, you know, I, I don't know if those projects are actually going to be financed and occur, but just gives you an idea that people are out there strongly considering applying these at a much larger scale. And thank you. Other questions? I have a question about the, uh, um, the solids. Uh, what's, what's being done? You said it's a high phosphorus. Uh, what are they currently doing with those solids? It looked like there was a picture. Is that the ammonia sulfate in the picture? Or no, the, like the, picture? the ammonia that sulfate that? just looks like water. I didn't take yeah. a picture of it because it looks yeah. like water. Uh, that picture there was the dried solids coming off the gap. So off of that dissolved air flotation, is a product that's about 15% uh, total solids. And then they're running it through a dryer, I forget the name, they, they bought the dryer from the Netherlands. Um, and they're drying that to 90% moisture. And they are shipping that across the nation. I know they even have markets in uh, California and Washington. Uh, and I, just, I just also want to say that they're starting to they're starting to take the ammonium sulfate that's the liquid and drip it into the dryer. So they're getting two for one. They're drying the ammonium sulfate to a crystallized ammonium sulfate and drying the solids and mixing it. Now they're selling that higher nitrogen. The, the two are combined. What's the energy source of the dryer? The energy source of the dryer is the waste energy. How, how do they seem to be doing with economics? You, you'll you notice that I would have preferred to uh, have much more specific data. Uh, this particular farm is not letting me, I shouldn't say let, it has not worked with me to try to uh, do a full mass balance. Uh, one of the reasons is I think they find economic opportunity to to do this on multiple farms and aren't releasing it out to universities. And that's where I think if these projects in the Chesapeake take off, that we should have Stephanie Lansing or whoever at you know, University of Maryland to, to really uh, 
do a full mass balance and economic analysis to see if they're paying. Receive a lot of grants or additional funding. This entire project was received no federal grants. This was paid for exclusively by the family-owned poultry farm. Okay, thank you very much.